Hi guys, I'm Medicine Mary and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new summer reading recommendation video for you. So we are in August and you know, final summer months here in the United States not in Australia where I grew up, where it is currently winter, but you know, it's beyond the point. Anyway, so I have split my recommendations up into three different kind of types. So the first section is going to be happy reads, just like really feel good vibes. The second section is like beach and lake reads. And the last section are summer thrillers, because I feel like a lot of the times people feel like thrillers are not made for the summer months, that thrillers are kind of meant to be read in like those stormy nights and when it's dark and ooky spooky out, but you know, I think that there are certain thrillers that are kind of made to be read during the summertime. And then I also have a manga recommendation for you guys to read during the summer that is a very sweet shoujo manga. So without further ado, let's get into the recommendations. So the first book that I'm going to be talking to you guys about is going to be one that I have been raving about a lot recently. So if you have been following my channel for the last couple of weeks, you will know that I am completely enamored with, <laughs> with this book. And that is Date Me Bryce and Keller by Kevin Van Wy. <laughs> I really, 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 really love this book. Like, with my whole heart, it is easily going to make it to one of the top books of 2020 for me. So we follow Kai Sheridan. He is a closeted gay and is also mixed race. And second semester of senior year, there is a dare put into place for Fairville Academy's golden boy, Bryson Keller. Whoever first asks him out on Monday morning gets to date him from Monday through Friday of that week. If someone does not ask him out on that Monday, he loses and has to take the bus to school for the rest of senior year. Now we're coming into a close when the book starts and one morning after a series of really crappy events, Kai ends up asking Bryson out. And this is kind of Kai's first time really coming out to someone. And Bryson actually ends up accepting because he's like, you know what? No one ever said that it had to be a girl who asked me out. So yeah, I'll go out with you. And it's this week of the two of them getting to know each other. And they're also partnered up for this school project. And so, it's just this really, really cute and sweet and beautiful, beautiful read. I will admit at the very end, there is a lot of um, homophobia and especially violence against people who are gay, like physical violence. So do be aware that going in, the end of this did make me like kind of tear up, but without that ending that made me tear up, I was smiling and giggling so much throughout this. It was just such a cute read, so I'd highly recommend it. <laughs> then I would recommend The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I read this this summer as well, and it was just such a fun and quick read for me because I found myself on the first page completely just enamored with Stella. So we follow Stella Lane and she has Asperger's. She is a high functioning on the autism spectrum and she's an econometrician. She loves her work. She has like you know, her orders, the way that she does things. And one day her mom kind of makes this remark of how like, you know, she, she eventually would like, um, some grand babies. And Stella doesn't really have a lot of luck in love. It tends to go really badly every time and she's never ever had good sex. So she hears a remark from a coworker saying that maybe she just needs practice. And to Stella, she goes, well, if I'm gonna practice, why don't I just hire a male escort? You know, they'll teach me everything about, you know, the male body and my own body. And that's what she does. So she hires Michael Fan, and he normally only sees a client once and that's it because he's had weird stalkery clients before. But after meeting Stella, he ends up coming to an agreement with her that he will give her a couple of lessons to help her kind of get comfortable with sex and touching and just being in a relationship with a person. It is such a wonderful, wonderful romance. I did give this only 4.5 stars because I didn't especially love Michael's character in the conflict, but Stella is easily one of my new favorite characters and it's just such a fun read. So it gives me like, you know, summary vibes. Then I want to also talk about Well Met. I did not look at the description before filming this, so I forget the main character's name. I remember the guy's name because it's my dad's name, Simon. But our main character she has just um, lost her job and so she's just come back home to st look after her older sister because her older sister was in a car accident and is no longer able to look after her daughter anymore. So she's basically coming to look after her niece and her niece wants to take part in the Renaissance Fair that's going on this summer. And so when she goes to take the child to the Renaissance Fair to go sign her up, she finds out that the daughter actually needs to have a guardian figure 
present during it. So she ends up having to sign up and she signs up to be a wench and she meets the director of the Ren Faire, Simon, and he is instantly just like not having it with her, gives her attitude because he doesn't think she's there to take it seriously. And they kind of spark up this like wench and pirate relationship within the Ren Faire with like their personas. So their personas like really flirty and stuff while they're there. And then when the day's over, they're completely like against each other again. It's kind of like a hate to love and I absolutely adored it. I read it in one night last year. I read it last summer and the sequel is actually coming out soon. So yes. <laughs> and then lastly for my, you know, happy recommendations, you know, the feel good books, I have Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. <laughs> Because how, like, come on, it's set at Camp Half-Blood, which is during the summer, and how does that not kind of give you, like, happy summer vibes to be at, like, a summer camp? And if you don't know what Percy Jackson is about, I'm so sorry, because it is one of the best series in the entire world. Um, I was a Percy Jackson kid growing up, still am a Percy Jackson kid, so, you know, wherever. PJO is about Percy Jackson, and... When he is, I think, 12 years old, he ends up getting taken to Camp Half-Blood and finds out that he is actually the son of Poseidon. And he ends up getting accused of stealing Zeus's thunderbolt. And so he ends up having to go on a quest with his best friend Grover, who is a satyr, and Annabeth, who is the daughter of Athena, to go and find out what actually happened to the thunderbolt. Oh my god, I literally... Also, it's getting adapted by Disney+, Plus, which is, like, fingers crossed because the movies weren't great. Logan Lerman was great. The movies weren't great, so you know, debatable. There's also a spin-off series called The Heroes of Olympus, which I really, really love. There's a character in there, Piper McLean, who is one of my favorite characters of all time. So anyway, I'm I'm diverging <laughs> from the main point of this, but yes. So those are my four happy reads. Now we're gonna move on to like my beach lake reads. And we're gonna start off with Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. Trisha Levenseller is an autobiography author for me. She is just completely phenomenal. I want to say if you're a fan of Sarah J Maas, definitely check out Trisha Levenseller. Daughter of the Pirate King follows Elosa and her dad is the Pirate King. She has been tasked by her father to find these parts of a map that will lead him to this like ultimate treasure. In order to find a piece of a map that's on this enemy ship, she ends up pretending to get caught by the ship. So the ship thinks that they've captured her, but she actually meant to get captured. Problem is that the uh, ship's first mate, I think his name's Raiden, he, he's, he's a bit suspicious. He's like, mm, mm, we captured you, but something doesn't seem Mm, no. And so it's the two of them kind of flirting with one another and like enemies to lovers kind of going on and it's so good and I love it and Alosa, oh my god, I should reread it. Then we have Meet Me at Midnight by Jessica Pennington. I read this a couple months ago but it is a lake, you know, romance and I love it. So for the past 10 years, Asher and Sydney have spent their summers at the lake staying at Lake Houses A and Lake House B respectively and engaged in a brutal prank war. However, this final summer before they both go off to college, their pranks actually end up going a bit too far and the owner of both of their lake houses end up kicking them out. And so they end up coming to a truce and decide not to prank each other, but instead pull the ultimate prank on the woman who kicked them out of their lake houses and ruined their summer. I had so much fun reading this. I was a bit hesitant at first because I hadn't read a YA contemporary in a while. But I started this one and I fell in love with it. It was so much fun. I loved Asher and Sydney. They were so cute. I loved how their romance kind of blossomed throughout it. I also think that the conflicts that were in this were very well dealt with because, I don't know, I just, I really liked the ending of this book. And like, obviously I can't say anything, but it means a lot to me when YA, like a romance doesn't necessarily follow the typical romance plot line. I thought that it was really well handled and I really enjoyed it. So just, just trust me on this one. If you guys love, I don't know, if you're a typical like contemporary romance reader with YA novels, like, you know, Morgan Matson, Sarah Dessen, um, Cassie West, I would definitely look into this book because it's, so good. Now, speaking of Sarah Dessen, I definitely do want to put you guys like, you know, onto Sarah Dessen's backlist. I've not really read all of her recent works. I've read the rest of the story, but a lot of her more like in the last five years, what she's put out, I haven't really read all those. But her backlist, um, such as Just Listen, The Truth About Forever, This Lullaby, and Along for the Ride, those four I would totally recommend if you want more contemporary YA reads. Hers always take place normally during like you know the beginning of a school year or during a summer before college and it's a lot about like you know self-discovery but also romance at the same time do check her out though 
Now, moving on to my lake-based thrillers, because technically that's what all three of these are. So first off, we have All These Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth Clairfoff. I feel like I've seen no one talking about this, and it is one of my favorite suspense books. Ten years ago, Grace Fairchild, the young wife of a real estate mogul, Alistair Calloway went missing and she went missing from her family's lake house while her children were there. Present day we follow Charlie Calloway and she is attending Knollwood Prep which is this very prestigious school in New England and she's there because you know it's a family legacy for her to be there because her dad went there and her dad's dad went there and it was like a whole thing. Now at Knollwood Prep there is a elusive group called the A Team. Now I know some of you are going to be like oh my god the A Team Prison of Lies. No. It's very different than that. So the A team at the beginning of every school year taps some of the most elite students to join their phrase. Now in order to actually be accepted into the A's, you must play the game. Charlie is tapped and asked to join the A's mostly because of her last name as a Callaway. She has to complete high stake dares in order to succeed. Whether it's, you know, stealing the collar off of the principal's dog, stealing test answers from somewhere else and X, Y, and Z, like all these crazy things. And in return, the A's not only kind of get rid of like, you know, shitty teachers at the school, they also um, help their own A's, like, you know, excel, not only just in school by, you know, going in line and like fixing their grades and stuff, but also afterwards it's like this whole secret society within that kind of goes into adulthood. What happens is as Charlie is participating in the game, she ends up actually uncovering secrets about what her dad's time at Knollwood Prep was like. And this kind of leads into some inklings about her mother's disappearance 10 years ago. And so we followed Charlie's POV, but we also around halfway through the book start getting flashbacks to Alistair and also Grace. And so you get chapters of Grace's POV from the time leading up to her disappearance and also a couple of Alistair's POVs during that time as well. And it was really interesting seeing how Alistair and Grace's past POVs linked up into Charlie's current POV and kind of how all the storyline weaved together. And there were just so many working parts to this book and so many just, there were so many things that just came to light at the very end. I feel like going through it a second time, knowing what I know now, it would be so much more interesting to see if you can pick everything out because it's just it's so interesting but yes that's one now the next one is of course a riley saga book because is any recommendation list complete without a riley saga book no because i love him so we have the last time i lied which is riley saga's sophomore novel in my opinion he does actually get better with each of his books so many years ago at camp nightingale we follow these very tight-knit group of friends, Vivian, Natalie, and Allison. However, this year there is a new camper and her name is Emma and she gets taken under their wings because they're kind of like the alpha females of this, you know, summer camp. However, one night, Emma wakes up and finds the three girls gone. She doesn't think much of it and the next morning they still aren't back. And then it turns out that they've actually gone missing and no one knows what's happened to them. Now we flash forward many, many, many years to when Emma is an adult. She's a very renowned artist and she actually ends up getting contacted by the camp director. And the camp is saying, hi, like we're actually deciding to start camp back up again. We would love to have you as you know, a mentor there to do the, you know, the painting and arts and stuff. And initially she wants to say no, but she ends up actually saying yes, so that she can go back and kind of investigate what really happened because she feels like she definitely missed something or that she's forgetting something that happened. And it's really interesting because once again, you're following present day where Emma's at the camp now and also years earlier when she was a child and the girls went missing. I still remember when I finished this book, I was in the airport coming Oh, no, I was in the airport leaving from New York to Australia for Christmas and I was listening to it in my headphones in the lounge and I just sat there and I was like, oh my God. And my mom looked at me and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm just like making all these weird faces and she's like, oh my God, can you stop? Like, stop making weird faces. People are looking at us. And I'm just like, oh my God, mom, this plot twist, this ending, I don't even know. But yeah, so... <laughs> Really good ending. I think this is from at all three of his books I think that the last time I lied has the best ending, but I also don't know how um, home before dark ends. so and then the last <laughs> Book I have before my manga is I'll never tell by Catherine McKenzie I just read this and this was also really fun. I gave it four out of five stars So we follow the McAllister siblings. There are four daughters and a brother 20 years ago during one time during camp 
one of the girl's best friends ends up going missing and then ends up getting found dead the next morning. And so camp gets canceled, blah, blah, blah. Flash forward to present day, the owners of the camp, the McAllisters, have passed away unexpectedly in a train accident. And in their will, they have left, you know, their whole massive inheritance to the children. But it comes with a catch. The four daughters are more than welcome to be on the will. However, they believe that the son actually killed Amanda 20 years ago. And so they said, Daughters, it is up to you. You can either decide that your brother is guilty and he gets no share of the will, or you can decide that he is innocent and have him as part of the will. We're following the McAllister siblings present day as they have 48 hours to make this choice. And then we're also following 20 years earlier, Amanda's POV of the night leading up to her death. And it's really interesting because every time we have one of Amanda's chapters and it ends, you get a recap of where everyone was that night and at that time. So it's a really cool like way to kind of follow and figure out like who actually killed Amanda, what happened to her, who was it, and I had a complete blast reading this book. Anyway, the last thing I have to talk to you guys about is the manga and that is going to be Honey So Sweet. We feel her now and she is one of these like sweet, innocent, cute girls at the school and one day she ends up getting confessed to by this big delinquent at her school named Tiger and she's just like, ah ha ha, ha ha, okay. I'll go out with you because she's petrified of him. But it turns out that he's actually not a delinquent. He's actually a really soft and sweet guy. And so everyone's afraid of him because he has like a very scary face, but he's not actually a delinquent. And it's a really sweet and cute romance in the two of them because she's like this really soft and innocent girl. He's a scary looking guy who's actually really soft and I love it to death. So do check it out. It's eight volumes. It's on Amazon. You can buy it. <laughs> And yeah, that's it. Let me know if you guys have any summer recommendations for me down below in the comments. If you guys did enjoy this video, please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more of me, please go to my channel. And until next time, thanks a bunch, guys. Bye!